Reference for the scientific data and medical facts provided in this video is given in the description box and also at the end of this video. Caffeine generally occurs in more than 60 plants. Around 90% of the people in this world use caffeine in one form or another. It is there in coffee, tea, soft drinks, chocolates and lot more. FDA says that caffeine is both a drug and a food additive. Therefore, caffeine is also used in lot of medical conditions to treat them but in a limited amount. When it is taken in higher amount, it can have lot of ill effects in our body, which we will see today. In central nervous system, caffeine stimulates brain, spinal cord and nerve. If caffeine is taken in the higher amount, it can result into caffeine intoxications, which can have 5 symptoms out of these 12, which include restlessness, nervousness, excitement, insomnia and many others. This criteria of caffeine intoxication is published in Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorder 5. Caffeine can result to sleep disorder like insomnia. It can aggravate anxiety or panic disorder. Therefore, it is advised that patients who are having generalized anxiety disorder or panic disorder not to uh, take caffeine or reduce the amount of caffeine. Caffeine can result into dependence syndrome which can have basically main three important feature persistent desire or unsuccessful effort to cut down or control caffeine use, continued caffeine use despite knowledge of having a persistent or recurrent physical or psychological problem that is likely to have been caused or aggravated by caffeine or it can have a uh, withdrawal symptoms. Caffeine withdrawal symptoms are lack of concentration, depression, constipation, headache, flu-like symptom, muscle pain, irritability, sleepiness. Generally, these withdrawal symptoms begin within 12 to 14 hours after stopping caffeine intake and it could last as long as 9 days. Here is the criteria to diagnose caffeine withdrawal and the next effect is tolerance as effect of caffeine decrease after repeated exposure to the drug such that the same dose of caffeine no longer produces equivalent effects or a higher dose of caffeine is needed to produce similar effects. In cardiovascular system, individuals who carry the variant of CYP1A2 gene can have hypertension, myocardial infarction also known as heart attack. It can result into uh, increased heart rate palpitation or arrhythmia. In other systems, it can cause heartburn or known as gastroesophageal reflex disease. In this, what happens as a gastric acid from our stomach goes back to the lower esophagus because of decreased tone of lower esophageal splinter which result into burning sens sensation and digestive problems. Caffeine acts as a diuretic. It dehydrates your body. Therefore, it is advised not to take after uh, after a workout or when you are in a desert. Here is a fact that caffeine does not make a drunk person sober or fit to drive. It does not get rid of the effects of alcohol. Now we'll see the effect of caffeine in pregnancy. It is said that if it is taken in higher amount, it can produce spontaneous abortion or impaired fetal growth. Caffeine has some benefits also, it can prevent Parkinson or liver disease or it can reduce the incidence of type 2 diabetes. Therefore, the caffeine should be taken in moderate amount. The safe or moderate amount is said to be 100 to 200 mg. It depends on the person's size, sex or how sensitive is their body to the caffeine. Here is the typical caffeine content in common foods and medications. Here is the reference. Thank you for watching this video and see you in my next video. Thank <laughs> you.